or simply charging absurd fees, breaking down telephone systems, sending signals to turn off uh, Georgia Power Company's electric plants. I mean, how much damage could you do on the information side? And what does it mean that you now live in a worldwide system where when something happens somewhere, CNN is there live? And if CNN is not there live, that there's now such a ubiquitous flow of, of video cameras that somebody will be there. I mean, how does that change things? I, you know, what, what's a, I, I, I tell military classes that I teach. You're going to be in a firefight where it's going to be live on CNN. Your cellular phone's going to go off. You're going to say, Mom, it's not as bad as it looks on TV. I'm very busy. <laughs> I can't talk now. Can I call you when the fight's over? And it sounds funny. It's, it's not a joke. I mean, you're going to have people who go into the field carrying cellular phones. And since you have more and more married people and more and more husbands and wives in the military, and they're sometimes drawing straw, I mean, which one stays home with the kids? They both leave. They, they, you know, the kids are with grandma. Now they're both worried about the kids. They're about to go out and patrol. They call in. You know, oh, Timmy has a fever. I mean, in the old days, there was a certain virtue of, of a wall between your civilian life and the war because you could focus on the war. Now you're going to have real-time flow of information all day, every day. You get in a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend just before you go on patrol. What are you thinking about? does go viral, wouldn't that almost, in, in some respects, render warfare obsolete? I mean, no. what, would be, what would be the advantage of going to war with a trade partner or, tra you know, I mean... The same as it was in 1914. Germany's biggest trading partner was France. And the fact is, and this is what makes me conservative, the fact is power in the end comes from power. And somebody who has a gun at your head or a knife at your throat has an enormous advantage in winning the argument. And you have, and you have, to, have, and you have to have a society capable of stopping that. No, I, I think it's a fact. I mean, it is a, it's just, just like you are talking about earlier, don't you have to go through these changes? Yeah. It is a fact that if one society is prepared to annihilate the other, it has an enormous advantage. And that what you've got to worry about is that somebody out there who's really bad is going to get into the third wave before you do. I mean, Nazi Germany that had, the, had an atomic bomb in 41. Okay? A Soviet, a Soviet Union that made the information age breakthrough before we did. I mean, and the, and the theory here is simple. There is evil. <coughs> and evil has to be dealt with. Okay? Now, what you've got to look at is, as you think about from you personally, up through family, business, government, uh, to the world, how can we learn more about the changes we're living through and the changes to come? Okay? And... Before we start talking about that, I'm proud of the team. Here is, I assume I'm holding up right, okay? Here is the symbol for crisis, which is made up of danger and opportunities. It's Chinese. This is the symbol. Beats me. There are limits to what I can, and I won't fake it because somebody will call in next week and say, boy, did you get that wrong. Uh, but the, the point is that I think that, that it's very important to have this sense of balance. I mean, you know, people who, who are self-described futurist innovators, I mean, when I was younger, a lot of people said, oh, this is all going to be wonderful. Maybe. There are dangers and opportunities. Some of it will be good. Some of it will be heartbreaking. Some of it will extend life. Some of it will destroy life. Air conditioning on balance has made life easier in the South. It's also increased pollution. And there's a cost to air conditioning. And so you've got to go through cycle after cycle. Uh, vaccinations against various diseases have been wonderful for the human race. They've also led to an extraordinary population explosion, which has not been as wonderful for other species. And so you've got to go through these kind of, of thinking about what works, what doesn't work. And I think you've got to always have a sort of balanced sense that there's nothing that comes as a totally free gift. But there's also very few things that come totally bad. And so you're constantly trying to balance the dangers and the opportunities. Now, what I want you to do, if you, if you think about going back to the core structure of thought that we talk about, you'd like to think through what are your vision, strategies, and projects for the transition? How are we going to go through the thawing and the refreezing? What's our vision of making the transition? What are our strategies for making the transition? What specific doable projects are out there that you could go and do that would help you make the transition. And finally, what should you do every day? And of course, as you're doing that, it's important to keep reminding people 
that the basic model for leadership is listen, learn, help, and lead. I mean, what's the best way to learn about the emerging third wave? <coughs> listen. And just constantly be probing. How do you find the characteristics? Let people tell you about them. And as you do that, you'll begin to learn things, you begin to piece things together. And then you'll be able to say, gee, I wonder if that's a principle. I wonder if that really does give me... Remember, the, the value of a principle is that it allows you to predict. Remember, Deming says every, every management action has to start with a theory. Okay? I've noticed every time that when we put the water on the fire, the water eventually boils. That could lead to a principle. Water, when heated, will boil. Now, that sounds obvious because you've learned it. But it's not obvious. So you come over here and you start saying, all right, what are the characteristics I am discovering by learning, by listening and learning, and what do they start telling me about the principles that might emerge? And by the way, it's possible to be all three. That is, you could end up in a, in a, in a third wave civilization, which is a global civilization, and which is so complex that you have, you have multiple patterns interacting simultaneously. Now, you do some of that already, don't you? You know, you, you can walk, you can roller skate, you can ride a bicycle, you can drive a car, you can ride in a bus, you can get an airplane. And you're able to integrate all those into your personality. Yet they're very different, aren't they? But you don't even think about it because you're used to it. See, the great power of being frozen is you get used to it. And so as we start emerging over here, we may have an extraordinarily complex system but it may reflect itself in very simple habits. Again, go back to UPS and FedEx. UPS and FedEx are unbelievable. I mean, you try to design the complexity by which they actually get it to work overnight on a worldwide basis. And it's immense. On the other hand, what's your experience of it? You pick up the phone. They show up. You give them the package and money. They leave. So for you, it's a very simple experience. Yet hidden behind that simple experience, is a very powerful complex system. Okay? Questions, comments? Okay. I, I can see that model some you know in some relay. But to me it seems like it's like the egg theory. You've got the egg over here and you want it cooked. And so over here you gotta get a, a pan and a water and everything. And so this is to me this is the, the thawing portion where you're bringing all the elements together right. to make it. And then you come out with a product, which would be this intangible. But that implies you already know the scheme. No. So you know you want a cooked egg. But you don't know if the egg's going to come out cooked like you want it. I mean, you just, you've got to no, know. No, but, but you already have a theory it'll cook. It I'm no, I'm suggesting to you that the truth is this is so big that we only have glimmerings, uh, to, to use Fred Franks, who was the commander of the Seventh Corps in Desert Storm. We only have glimmerings of the future. I mean, through the fog, we sort of see a little of this and a little of that, and we think it's going to be this way. But I'd carry you back a stage further. How do we know it's an egg? How do we know it's food? I mean, what if, in fact, it's a Fabergé egg? And we now put it in the pot, and we start cooking it, thereby ruining a very valuable art object. 